Hey everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Modded Korea with me, Oofle Spoofle. In this episode, we launch space tourists on our space program's very first reusable rocket, the first ever tourist mission to Minmus launches from the desert launch site, and we send the first ever probe to the innermost planet, Moho. Hope you guys enjoy. Anyone who's ever played career mode will know that rockets can be really expensive, and every time you hit that space bar to stage away your booster, that's tens of thousands of funds literally being thrown into the sea. If we want to make space tourism affordable, this isn't gonna cut it. That's why I've built the Transporter 2, the first ever reusable crew launcher. On paper, it doesn't look too different to the Transporter 1. It can put four Kerbals into low carbon orbit, and it has the ability to dock with a space station if it needs to. However, when we reach the point of stage separation, this is where things start to go a little differently. Instead of just splashing into the ocean, the lower stage flips around and relights its engines to perform a boost backburn that puts it on a trajectory that returns to the Kerbal Space Center. As the booster reaches the lower parts of the atmosphere, a set of grid fins gives us aerodynamic control, and a set of air brakes helps us slow down. This is enough to slow us down to subsonic speeds. About a kilometer above the ground, three of our five engines light up one last time to propulsively land. Since we landed the booster so close to the space center, we get practically all of the funds we spent on our booster back. Anyway, let's go see how the upper stage is doing. While the booster performed flawlessly, the upper stage left a lot to be desired. Generally, my launches take a fairly shallow ascent profile, meaning that my upper stage would have a much higher horizontal speed. This means that the upper stage would fall back down to carbon a lot slower, so that I would have more time to do my circularization burn. However, things are a little different with this rocket. Every meter per second of horizontal speed gained by my booster during the ascent phase will have to be cancelled out by the boost back burn. For this reason, I ended up taking a much steeper ascent profile than usual. For this launch, I did what I was used to doing and waited until pretty much as late as possible to start my circularization burn. As you can probably see here, I ended up falling back to carbon pretty quickly. To counteract this, I had to point my nose up to fight gravity. This is not something you want to be doing, because you want to be putting as much of your energy into going horizontally, not wasting it by literally going nowhere. Anyway, the upper stage had enough propellant to get us into low carbon orbit, which was definitely a relief. With that out the way, it's time to plot our rendezvous with Carbon Space Hotel, where our tourists will be staying for the next day. And with the power of editing, we're now approaching the space station after a nice quick rendezvous. Totally didn't realize that I'd forgotten to wait for the right launch window and ended up on the other side of the planet to where the space station was. <coughs> anyway, a quick firing of our RTS thrusters later and we're docked to the space station. Alright, you have 5 seconds to admire the station, then we're going back to Kerbin. Okay, time's up. It's just going to be a quick undocking and firing of our thrusters to get away from the station because jeez, this thing makes my game lag. Anyway, now that we have a frame rate above 5, we can fire up our engine one last time to do our deorbit burn. This doesn't have to be too precise because once we've detached the service module, we can fine tune our approach with the crew module's onboard RCS thrusters. This allowed me to target a very precise landing site and just kidding, we're on completely the wrong continent. Oh well, I'm sure the recovery team won't mind. Okay, I promise this next one's gonna be quick. We've already seen a low carbon orbit mission using the Transporter 2 rocket, so there isn't really anything new here. The only difference is that I've switched the crew capsule out for one that can seat 5 Kerbals instead of 4 because I completely forgot to actually read the contract details. Anyway, to prove that last time wasn't just a fluke, Mechjeb, I, I mean I, managed to land the booster back at the KSC. I learnt my lesson from last time and fired the upper stage engine immediately after stage separation, meaning that the orbital insertion wasn't quite as inefficient as last time. This contract didn't require me to dock with a space station, so after about an hour of hanging around in orbit, we can do the same old deorbit burn, re-entry and splashdown procedure. Nice. Oh, and by the way, not bad for a mission that only cost us about 12k to launch. While Transporter 2 is great for getting Kerbals to low carbon orbit, we're gonna need something a little bit more powerful if we want to go further. Two tourists have asked to go on a flyby of Minmus and at the moment, Enceladus is the only rocket powerful enough to do that. While you might think that an Enceladus is too expensive for use on a tourist mission, trust me, the rewards for this contract are more than enough to justify it. As you have probably realized, we have a bit of a change of scenery for this launch. 
Now, I kind of just wanted an excuse to use some of the alternate launch sites, but there is also a decent reason for why I launch from the desert. It's located around 7 degrees south of the equator, which happens to almost perfectly match the orbital inclination of Minmus. This means that if you time your launch correctly, you can get to Minmus with no inclination changes. Anyway, with our two space tourists in orbit, it's time to do our trans-Minmus injection burn. As you can see, the alternate launch site definitely worked, as we have a nice equatorial Minmus encounter without having to do any correction burns. Seven days later, and our crew have arrived at Minmus. Since this is only a flyby, there is no need to do any sort of orbital insertion burn, so our crew can relax and enjoy the view. It's going to be another seven days until we get them back to Kerbin, but I'm sure the tourists are fine with that. We did tell them it was going to be a long trip, right? Oh well, too bad. Now, while we could have gone for a direct re-entry into Kerbin's atmosphere, I decided to lower our orbit using the remaining Delta V in our upper stage. This allows us to pick and choose our landing site a little more precisely than a direct re-entry. It also reduces the g-forces during re-entry as well as the heating. Although, let's be real, stock re-entry heating is… pathetic. As you can see, I didn't manage to get the landing too precise, and that was mainly because of our 25 degree orbital inclination. But we are on the right continent, so that's a start. Anyway, we can collect a modest amount of funds and move on to the next launch. Alright, the last launch of this video is going to be an interesting one. So far, we've sent probes to Kerbin, Duna and Eve, so to conquer the inner solar system, we need to explore one more planet. And that, of course, is Moho. Moho might be a pretty small planet, but do not underestimate the Delta V requirements it takes to get there in the first place. Since it's so close to the sun, we're going to need to cancel out a lot of Kerbin's orbital speed to drop our orbit. This really limits how much payload we can send there, and before you get your hopes up, no, we're not going to even attempt to get in orbit of Moho. As you can see, we are once again using the trusty Enceladus rocket to launch our payload. While Enceladus is capable of putting 15 tons in low Kerbin orbit, we're really going to have to cut back on payload mass if we want to get to Moho. So here's what I came up with. It's a very basic probe with only the bare minimum in terms of scientific equipment, and it weighs in at just under a ton. Now the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that this is a bit of a short escape burn for a Moho mission, and you'd be right in saying that. This isn't normally how you should get to Moho, especially if you plan to get into orbit. But since I'm going for a flyby and I'm on a bit of a tight Delta V budget, I decided to take a bit of a detour. While it did result in a very high relative velocity to Moho, it was the least Delta V hungry transfer I could come up with. Anyway, let's time warp ahead a little bit and oh. Yeah, that's not really something you want to see. Looks like our Kerbals on Carbon Space Hotel have had a little too much vitamin D. Oh well, they've done all the research they can, so let's get them back down to Carbon. So much for permanent presence in space. Anyway, as I was saying, after a little time warping, our probe has arrived at Moho. I feel like I've rambled enough, so I'll just let you enjoy the flyby. Wow, that was fast. A little too fast actually, and it looks like a lot of our scientific equipment didn't have enough time to gather any useful data. It's a real shame we won't be able to get back to Moho. Actually, you know what, let's at least try. And would you look at that? With a small correction burn, we can actually get another Moho encounter after just one more orbit of the sun. So after performing the correction burn, we have another Moho flyby all set up. Now our probe has another chance to collect science data from Moho. I decided to place this flyby over Moho's North Pole because I'm sure we all know what unique and totally intentional terrain feature is there. Anyway, we have enough propellant for a third flyby, but it looks like we have a dual transfer window to attend to. But I think that will have to wait. Alright, this better work. <clears throat> If you enjoyed this video, don't leave a like and don't subscribe to stay updated on the series. <coughs> I also have this thing, it's pretty cool I guess. If you for some reason want to join the Discord, there's a link in the description, along with a list of all the mods used in this video. Anyway, that's it from me, thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.